What is going on YouTube? We were having some issues that actually um, Facebook is well aware of. <laughs> Not really on YouTube for whatever reason it wasn't working, but for the July market report, it's probably everyone's concerned because they don't know what's going on. A lot of people are obviously watching the news. Um, you know, news is totally different. Yes, there's the markets, which is the stock equities market. Then you have the news, which is all political. And then you have the news, which is where a lot of people, they watch not only real estate, but just other larger, you know, are companies buying other companies? Are there a lot of companies actually going public? So we're gonna first start with Manhattan, okay? Um, so it's a little dire, the Element Report. This is coming in from Street Easy, everyone's favorite uh, website in the world. Obviously, it's really saved a lot of time for all of my buyers. So pricing, we'll start with that. Well, this is all gonna be Manhattan, then we're gonna do Brooklyn, then we're gonna do Queens. So pricing, Manhattan increased only 0.6% year over year. Uh, it was actually very heavy, very heavy in the beginning part of this year, and it's really stagnated in the last month probably about 45 days. There was three homes we put into contract that if it was even two weeks later, I don't think we would have gotten the pricing. So the Upper East Side had the largest increase of pricing at 2%. So out of Manhattan, you have a, the largest increase was only 2%. Downtown remained flat, so downtown is 14th Street and below. Uh, Upper East Side, if we're talking about inventory, inventory skyrocketed to the largest year over year, which was at 16%. So inventory is the amount of homes that are on the market. 16% is not a good number because were there 16% more buyers for those homes? No, not at all. And we're gonna probably start seeing that going into August and September. And, and I'll give my commentary uh, sort of at the end because Typically, when you see this, um, this activity where there is a lot of inventory and there's not a lot of buyers, which is right now, uh, you kind of see, are people still going on vacation? Are people still getting married? Are people still you know, fr frivolously spending their money? And they are. So it's a very interesting time where money is still exiting people's bank accounts, but they're not actually buying homes. They're looking, they're going out. Uh, so there is more inventory. The Upper East Side had the largest inventory increase of 20%. So that means 20% more homes on the market this year than there was last year. And discounts, which I'm gonna talk about right now, discounts is price reductions. So the amount of homes that received a discount were 16% more homes. 16% more homes received the discount. So I'll talk about it, you know, I would say if you're a seller, you have to price it right. It's not, even in 2009, 2008, 2010, because 2009 was really when the recession, and I put it in quotes because it happened in the rest of the, the, the economic collapse, if you really wanna go there. Uh, happened in the rest of the country and then it sort of slid right into Manhattan but it, it happened later and then we came out of it really quick and in Manhattan it, it th homes were still trading that wasn't the issue homes were there were still buyers I, I did a de that was my first year of real estate and I did a good amount of deals for a, a first year agent and these were new developments you know yes the amount of deals were they were to be had but the amount of discounts really weren't there so days on the market, which is a very big uh, number. So once you put it on and you list it, when does it come off? So the median is 55 days on the market right now. That's only three days lower than last year. So that's pretty stagnant. The Upper East Side though, however, had the homes lingered 10 days and 17 days longer. So 10 days on the Upper East Side and 17 days on the Upper West Side. That is, that's, that's a significant amount of time. That's almost three weeks longer. And that's a median amount of time. And then rentals, for all those people that care, you have a massive amount of rentals that are coming online this year, beginning of next year. If you go up to 50, in the 50s, the West 50s, you have Hudson Yards, which is 732 units. Those are all rentals. Even if you go just south of there, there's a massive amount of rental buildings there. And then you go further up into the mid 50s and then the high 50s you have just there's just there's probably and they're offering massive dis discounts they're offering you know five hundred dollars uh, security deposit you know three months free on an 18 month lease things like that so rents actually rose in the sub market of upper manhattan the most at three percent I negotiated a because I live in a rental I negotiated a nothing 
didn't go up, so that's that's good. Moving on to Brooklyn, is pricing reached an all-time high in North Brooklyn, which is kind of interesting if you think about it, because North Brooklyn is where the L train is, and their pricing increased 11%. 11%. So that's that's due to new inventory, I'm sorry, new development, but it rose to $1.2 million. That That's a high price for North Brooklyn, and especially the fact that maybe there are people that don't work in Manhattan, but with the L train shutdown, and I'll talk about a couple other areas that it's actually affecting, but with the L train shutdown in April of 2000 of next year, I, 2000 of next year, 2019, you really have to consider why and then rents, and we'll talk about rents in Brooklyn, but inventory continued to climb. This is crazy. So the inventory in Brooklyn, we're all talking about Brooklyn right now, continued to climb up 23%. Up 23%. That's a massive number. South Brooklyn saw a 44% more homes on the market than last year. North Brooklyn was the only submarket so this is it. This is this is the 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 economics behind all the numbers is that North Brooklyn going back to it. North Brooklyn pricing rose 11% and interestingly interestingly enough is that they're they were the only ones with less inventory. So if you consider that, that's obviously a lot of new developments that either closed at really high prices, or those are people that probably signed contracts last year. And maybe their home wasn't ready, or, or that's probably, those are probably all new developments. Expect that number to be totally different next month. So days on the market, um, that's obviously how long, that was pretty much stagnant actually in Brooklyn. And, it was actually a little bit more, six days, which, you know, a week, it's not that big of a deal, you know, compared to the Upper East Side and the Upper West Side, the Upper East Side, 10 days more, 17 days on the Upper West Side. Um, but rents, this is very interesting. Rents rose in all sub-markets, except, so sub-market, obviously you have all of Brooklyn and each neighborhood. Rents rose in all sub-markets except North Brooklyn. So. I would say one of the biggest things that we're going to be monitoring, monitoring is the sales and the rentals once the L train actually shuts down because there's a lot of people theoretically and that's why North Brooklyn was the only one that actually did not increase is because a lot of people say I'm moving out there because I'm getting more space. I'm moving out there because I have a lot more amenities than I would get in Brooklyn. You know, the buildings, they're kind of cool. Some of them are warehouses, they have exposed brick, they have you know, wood beams and things like, like that, that a lot of people want. You know, these are people that probably couldn't afford downtown Brooklyn or the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side. And really, Brooklyn's kind of cool right now if you're still in that demographic of going out, the bars, you have the waterfront, they're totally transforming that. They also have, you know, boats that take you downtown, midtown, uh, wrap around to the other side of Manhattan. So, and those are all, uh, ironically enough, very inexpensive. I had a friend that took it. It was like 275. I'm like, that's a subway ride. He said, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that one, Charles. <laughs> Queens, moving on. We'll, we'll cover that really quick, which is pricing rose. And this is the thing. We'll go into Queens. So if you go on the Long Island Railroad and you're exiting Manhattan and you look on the left side, the north side of the tracks, you'll see massive inventory that has come on the market. Just, just, and these aren't small buildings. These are 25, 30, 40 story buildings city blocks of inventory that are coming on the market. It kind of looks, and then there's still more. You see cranes everywhere. It looks like Miami. It's kind of crazy. So Queens, pricing cuts rose to an all-time high. And, and obviously, I would say the least, the, probably the bullish is, I would say, Manhattan right now. Brooklyn had their, their rise. Yes, the numbers speak otherwise. But Queens, I would say, if you're in a rental, negotiate your rental, don't pay any increase. You could even maybe go down and start looking. If you're selling or buying in Queens, selling probably not the best because I'll talk about it in a second. So price cuts rose to an all-time high of 11%. The inventory, this is crazy, the inventory went up 43%. 43%. 
the amount of inventory swelled to 43%, all sub-markets saw a surge. So there wasn't one that actually came down a little bit. Uh, days on the market pretty much stagnated. Rentals remain flat at $2,100 on average. And, and this is the only borough with an increase of a discount in rentals uh, at 17%. So it's the only borough with an increase in discounts on rentals. Okay, so in other words, going down. And, and like I said, those, these are all projects that were signed years ago. These were probably signed under Bloomberg that are coming online because by the time they get DOB approval and then they actually start getting the contractors and then they get the CO, which is the, their certificate of occupancy, and then they start marketing it and then people moving in, this was years. This has taken years and unfortunately they all came on at the exact same time. So you're going to have a lot of competition if you're a seller in Queens. If you're a buyer in Brooklyn or in Manhattan, you're going to have a lot more inventory. You're going to have a lot more to choose from. If you're a seller, you have to price it right. I met with a seller yesterday and we had we got really good pricing on one of the neighbors. Then that neighbor referred me to their neighbor. We got really good pricing on that, and then that person referred me to the person I spoke yesterday, obviously working by referral, and we discussed it, and they're moving out of state, so they are not gonna be there, and they wanna get the highest price. This is, it's not their nest egg, they're fine, but it's more, I, I told them, I said, if we're coming on in the fall, we have to get our pricing right, because otherwise, we're just gonna sit. And there's a lot of homes that are sitting, and if you sit, you're then gonna get discounted, and, and honestly, they agree. They're like, listen, I don't want this to be on for six months. That's maintenance they're paying. The mortgage is already paid off, but if you consider it, it's sitting there, they have insurance, uh, and they're just saying, listen, we wanna dump it, we wanna go somewhere else. They're musicians, they travel a lot, so, you have to be smart with the pri pricing if you're a landlord and you're putting in rentals or you're putting your rentals on the market, number one, or you're a seller. If you're a buyer or you're someone consuming the inventory, uh, you're in a pretty good place. Granted, I did lead before was the most important thing is that people are still spending money. So it's not that they're not bullish at the economy, it's just there's a lot of people outside the city, you know, even looking around, you know, on weekends, a lot of people are not in the city, it's very quiet, July 4th, that whole week, no one was here, so it's not that they're not spending money, it's just maybe they're hesitant. So I would say wait for the fall, August, we're probably gonna be similar numbers than that we're seeing right now here in July, um, but the, the biggest, point is gonna be September. And those numbers are gonna come in probably in October because it takes about a month to compile the numbers and everything else. So if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Uh, if you guys want any advice, obviously 212-630-8000, charles at boatinston.com. Uh, we're gonna be doing this every single month. We're gonna ping it out through email. We're also gonna be doing a blog with more in better content, we're actually bringing on a copywriter, so, because I can't write for anything. So, if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below, subscribe to the video, and I will see you guys in August, and, and fingers crossed that we have less inventory, and the, and the homes are moving instead of price discounts, and, and then it starts competing with your neighbors and everything like that. So, have an awesome day, talk to you guys soon.